So once again, he can't understand the third dimension, and there's nothing we can really do about that, because he only has a one-dimensional eye. But to him, this is almost magical. If we take this eraser, for example, and we just plop it on his world, and a little rectangle appears here, let's say. Well, we're going to move the eraser to over here. And we just saw it move, and that's fine, it's natural movement. But to him, it just teleported, because it didn't travel any space over here. It did that all in the third dimension. So by doing this, we're teleporting through his world. And I'm sure you've heard of supernatural things like that, where you deal with things moving at speeds, UFOs, aliens. Well, the theory is, what if they're just a four-dimensional thing? Because a four-dimensional being, just like we can teleport in his world, a four-dimensional being would be able to teleport in our world. So that's the basics of the second dimension. So let's think about the fourth dimension now, that we know everything underneath it. So you start with a point in zero dimensions. If you expand a point, you get a line. If you expand a line, you get a square or any other shape for that matter, but for our purposes, a square. If you expand a square into the third dimension, you'll get your cube. Now, what if you expand a cube? Well, once again, just like Stickman can't see a cube, we're not going to be able to see a four-dimensional cube. But we can talk about it a little bit. It actually has a name. If you take this cube and push it through the fourth dimension, you make what's called a tesseract. All right, that up here in case want to look that up. Let me just make sure I have the right spelling here. <sighs> Tesseract. Some people also call this a hypercube because it's well beyond anything crazy. So now if you push this thing, you're going to get a tesseract. And actually what that's made up of is eight cubes. Just like a line is made up of two points on either side, and a square is made up of four lines, a cube is made up of six squares bounding it. A tesseract is made up of eight cubes. Now, Dolly, and a famous artist for those of you who do not know him, was a surrealist. And he created a painting that actually depicted a certain view of this tesseract called Christ or Corpus Hypercubus. It's in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City, if you're interested in seeing this, or Google it, and I'm sure you can find it. And he used what's called the net view of the Tesseract. So the net view of a cube, though, we're going to talk about three dimensions first before we get any, any more crazy. If you took a cube and you wanted to see what is called the net view of it, what we're going to do is unfold it. We're going to take each side and unfold it like like a box, like a cereal box, ripping it apart and flattening out the cardboard. So what's going to happen is we're going to have a square up here, we're going to have a square down here, a square over here, a square over here, a square over here, and a square over here. That's what it would look like unfolded. Now if you can imagine for a minute folding it back up, we would take this square, fold it up, take this square, fold it up, fold, fold, fold. This would be the bottom, let's say. This would be the sides, and this would be the top. Now, if you can understand that and visualize folding this thing up and unfolding it, and this being the flat version, I'm going to show you the net view of a tesseract now, or a four-dimensional cube. Which, like I said, like this has six squares bounding it. A tesseract has eight cubes. So this looks a little bit like this. Let's see if I can draw this. Not the easiest stuff to draw. Now 
excuse me for my artistic inability to draw this thing, but imagine eight cubes, the first six in the standard one that we just showed recently with the squares, and then one in front and one behind. And that's the unfolded tesseract. So to form a tesseract, you're gonna take these eight cubes and fold them in on each other. And once again, we can't comprehend that. So just like we pushed the cube through the 2D man's world, we're gonna push a four-dimensional cube or a tesseract through the three-dimensional world. And what would happen? Well, just like the cube, it wouldn't, we wouldn't see it at first. As it's being pushed in from the side, we wouldn't see it at all. Then all of a sudden, it would, it would just appear out of nowhere, out of thin air, as a cube, just like the square appeared to Stickman. So this cube is going to appear. It's going to hang around for a little while, and then it's going to disappear. And we're going to be like, okay, we didn't see anything. We just saw a cube appear and disappear. How'd you do that? It's, it's nothing 4D, though. And then, well, okay, well, let me try the sphere. Let me try the four-dimensional sphere. Okay, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to start pushing through. We're not going to see anything. Then out of thin air, a point will appear. It's going to grow and grow and grow like a balloon into a sphere. It's going to grow and then contract again down to a point and then disappear again. And once again, it's going to be like magic to us. We don't understand what's going on. So then let's do the eraser thing. Just like we moved the eraser around in the 2D world, let's say a four-dimensional person has some sort of eraser that they're moving around in our 3D world. It's just going to appear here, appear here, there, 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 and just move around without actually traveling that space. So we're not going to understand what's going on. And just like Stickman, I'm going to erase this net view for a minute. Just like Stickman had his house, which he is now bigger than, and had his chair inside on his table and his glass of water. Remember, he only sees the line, the edge, but we see inside the house. So a four-dimensional person could see inside our houses from the outside. He could see inside safes. He could see inside anything, for that matter, because all the walls don't cover the third dimension in the 2D world, and all our 3D walls do not cover the fourth dimension. It leaves it wide open. So all you got to do is the four-dimensional person staring right in. And he can go in there if we want. We can just come right on here, grab this glass of water, take it out, and give it to Stick Man. And he say, you didn't even open up the door. I had the house lock. How'd you, how'd you get my water out? Well, it's just it's easy as long as you're in one dimension or higher. So what does that mean? Well, if there is a four-dimensional thing out there, then it can do a lot of crazy stuff. Now, what can we relate this to? Well, for those of us that are Christians, we can think of this almost as God or heaven. We think about angels and God and somewhat the devil, for those of you who believe in that, as being able to look at the whole world and interact with it and do things that we can't even imagine, move things like just, there's so many stories out there, and you say, well, how is that possible? You can't, you can't appear here and disappear there and, and move something from here to there and make it disappear from my filing cabinet. People will say, oh, my keys were missing and I prayed and they appeared on my nightstand. Well, you know, things like that are possible in the fourth dimension. I'm not saying that's exactly what happened. I'm not saying I believe in that. I'm just saying there's a possible explanation for that. Now, for those of us who want explanation of God in these terms, well, let's look at Stickman again. Let's shine a flashlight on Stickman's world. Everything in Stickman's world will be illuminated. It'll be lit up. He'll be able to see it. But he's not going to know where that light's coming from because the flashlight's out here, and just the light is spreading and hitting everything at once. Well, think of God as a four-dimensional flashlight, if you will. He can be everywhere at once, inside, outside, hitting every point in the three-dimensional world, and we don't know where it's coming from. We don't know the source, but it can just be out in the four-dimension. 